So you were you were born and raised in Jackson, then just went right there to Union because I know exactly yeah. what it is. Yep, stayed in Union, like pretty involved growing up. Yeah, like with the school, uh, parents involved in some stuff there, and so you know had a good connection there and really liked it. And didn't really want to stay home, but loved the school for and sure. So you know lived two miles away, but try to live on campus and kind of get away from home a yeah, little no bit doubt. and stuff like that. So. Yeah, then moved down here to go to Beeson Divinity School. Uh, did that uh, from 2004, 2007, graduated from there. And uh, my wife was a teacher during that time in okay. Denver uh, schools. And then I got on, went on staff at Shades Mountain Baptist Church with their youth. And so was the uh, was the associate student minister there for four years. Okay, so you left Union. You came out here to go to Beeson, yep. which is the Divinity School at Sanford, at Sanford correct? Yes. Yes. Um, so, kind of been in the church world. Church world for a fair amount of right. uh, time. Um, and so, during that time, uh, like with the youth, one of the things that you started trying to get us really involved in uh, was like serving in the community. Right. Um, and so, we would do stuff like meals at homeless shelters, yeah. uh, like service projects, things like that, trying to get them plugged in. See, like most of our kids were. Hoover and Vestavia. Okay. And so trying to get them exposed yeah. to, to more uh, more things, more people. But also kept running into a wall, getting frustrated because there wasn't like a lot of opportunities where you could really invest in people long term. Okay. You could just serve a meal, yeah, yeah. put it on a plate, that sort of thing. And so uh, that's kind of what led me to kind of down the road. I'm not getting too far ahead of myself, but yeah. to where we are, where I am now. But... So, so the, let's talk about the being involved in church, being involved in the in ministry, yep. because I mean, ministry for so many people, whether it be you know, a guy working a camera to a guy leading worship to a guy preaching to you know yep. being in students, because um, <clears throat> there's a thousand stories out there. I felt the Lord calling me. Why, why did you decide to get into? Did you go? To, did you you went to Beeson and finished it at Beeson? Yeah, I went to Beeson, finished at Beeson. Oh wow! Okay, interned at. Uh, so part of it was, you know, long for back when I was at Union, right? Had a guy that uh, I mean, sorry, back when I was in high school, yeah. There was a guy that went to Union and was an intern at our church, okay. Uh, and got close to him. He coached basketball teams, yeah. You know, small groups, stuff like that. Went to camp with us. Got to be close to him. He lived at our house, like in our basement during the oh, summers. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, stuff like that. Our family got to be close with him. He moved down here to go to Beeson, and so then I was at Union, going okay. through Union. And so I had the Beeson connection. Well, then he got on staff at Shades Mountain. Okay. And so when I was at Beeson, we were still close. Okay. So then he hired me to be his intern. So there's a lot of yeah, connections. Sure. I mean, part of Beeson, part of just the, you know, seminary, you had to, you had to get an internship. Yeah. Uh, kind of, I don't know, second or third year. And so that was an easy connection. And so got got plugged in with the students. And then he took a job as a pastor in Nashville. Uh literally right as I was graduating. And so he wasn't the, there was a youth minister uh, over everything. Yeah. Scott Heath, uh, incredible guy. And Jay, my buddy, uh, worked under him. Okay. And so when Jay left yeah. to go to Nashville, there was a, you know, I was graduating. I knew the students. Perfect storm. You know, uh, yeah. was close with them. And so it, it just all kind of worked out. So in a lot of ways, it was not like, I mean, it, it, could, I mean, it could appear coincident you know, that it all worked out that way. Right. I know it was God's hand in everything, but it wasn't like this strong, like at age, whatever. I was like, I'm going to be <laughs> at age seven. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go be a youth minister or yeah. do anything. Like it wasn't that it's just pieces kept falling right. in place and it, and it worked out. Okay. So. so part of our relationship is came in through fitness. Yep. So throughout, throughout your, your, I say career throughout your life, how has, where'd the fitness part come in? It wasn't really a big part. I mean, I played, you know, I'm five foot eight, so, uh, and not super fast. So sports, were I, played, I, try, I love basketball. Combination. Yeah. And I played, tried to play basketball in high school and, you know, eventually that right. hit its ceiling. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, would do stuff, be active through that, but wasn't, you know, really into it. College, you know, did the intramural sports yeah. thing, but wasn't much for working out. I think it was like I got married when I got engaged okay. senior year. I was like, 
okay, I need to get in shape. I got to get in shape. <laughs> and so started working out with some buddies and then moved down here and always would kind of stumble through like the whole Planet Fitness or joining a gym, Absolutely. like just kind of trying to figure it out, different plans that you find yeah. on the internet. And uh, but then like having kids, remember it was like our last kid, uh, my wife got pretty sick after. Mm -hmm. And it was just the whole, life's crazy, had two little ones, third right. kid, she's sick, weight ballooned, super out of shape. And so uh, started trying to get back in shape. And then a, a guy from church was like, hey, you should try CrossFit at J19. Cool. And I Googled it and it was like three minutes from my house. Sweet. And so went there, met <laughs> Kelly, who owns that, uh, and have been there ever since. So that was about six years ago. Wow. And then met you, I think, through competition at yeah. J 9 and all that. So that's how that kind of fell in place. So it was kind of like since college, been here and there part of my life. But I'd say over the last six years, it's been pretty consistent gotcha. part of my life. So, so you're at the church now. What are you full time? How long? Yes. Were, how long? How long did you do that full time? I did four years full time. Okay. Um, I did you know part time finishing up school right as an intern. And did, then, then what did you transition into after that? For after, after church. After, after, church. after church. church. So part of what I was saying earlier is you know trying to find the stuff with um, with the youth to do in the community. Right. I was getting frustrated. Like you know you just you this a shelter would say sure you can come serve a meal this date or you could do a holiday meal or you could do a service project I'm like you don't ever really get to connect with those people there's no relationship that day. there's no, there's no relationship. relationship okay and i don't want to like dog on that stuff too much cuz i can get on a soapbox about it yeah for sure but i think the lord uses those things to absolutely to do good things and to prompt people but that started some of the frustration and so uh this guy that i work with now his name's Jim McFarland his sons were in the youth group okay. um, when I was working at Shades. And his younger son, Reed, was in a discipleship group that I led. So I had Reed in a discipleship group from his eighth grade year, when this was back when I was interning, then the years I was on staff full time. So I had him eighth grade to 12th grade. So got to be close with him. Okay. Got to know his dad some, yeah. you know, just um, through that. But the Lord was doing stuff in Jim's life, he was doing stuff in my life. Right. It kind of it converged. We wanted to do some stuff with the youth. We're like, man, we need to do some stuff where they can like dig in a little bit, like and not just you know this you random tried, stuff. You saw a problem. The yeah. problem was you were in the youth ministry, but like you didn't feel like you were making an impact on these kids' lives simply well, because they didn't have. You didn't feel like there was a great area for there them was, to just totally get invested. Yeah, in. there wasn't. Uh, for the, we had you know it was a big church, big youth group. I had these kids. I had a, a small group of kids that loved. Going to a shelter and serving a meal. I had a homeschool kid that literally would come. We'd go to a shelter once a week together. Cool. You know, it was cool stuff that was making an impact, but it was like stuff that it was still like felt like I was hitting this wall. And I'm reading scripture, knowing we're supposed to care for the poor, knowing that we're going to invest in the poor, knowing what like relational ministry right. looks like. It's the whole you know approach to try to take to students or anyone you're ministering to is about relationships. But with the poor, we're treating them like I can give you this one-off meal. Pat you on the back and say, you know, be on your way, be on your way, and that's Bob not. Probably was pretty, pretty specific, clear. pretty specific so, about that. I wasn't really looking to like jump ship, but Jim and I connected over, you know, doing something with the youth. So we collected some blankets, coats, uh, stuff. This was like January 2010. Okay, and it was freezing. Like it was literally. I mean, it was so cold. This day, we decided we got all the stuff together and we went downtown. And we were naive; we didn't know what we were doing. I mean, we were green, and we parked <laughs> on Third Avenue and got out and uh, got the boxes of stuff out. We got some hot chocolate, some brownies, blankets, coats, whatever. And people just started coming, right? <laughs> and it, looking back, I would never do that again the way we did it. But um, we we did that. I had to get some of the youth back. To church, like to the, their parents, whatever time it was, I had to take a gr crew back. And Jim stayed down there and met some folks. Well, he met some folks that were living, we were at like Third Avenue, right around Firehouse Shelter. And he met some guys that were living just a couple blocks back under I 65. Okay. So he went back under there for, I can't remember the exact reason why. Um, he took them something, uh, wasn't very far, got to know them and asked them, hey, is there anything else you need? And they said something about firewood for their fire barrel nice. and stuff like that. And he's like, I can do that. 
So he brought them back some firewood. I think they were pretty surprised that the guy actually so, came so, back. So.